Gabriela on the scene today with Talk Network Radio. We have a real treat for you just around the corner, and that is Empowered Living with Jeff Bird. Jeff is the owner of Jeffrey Bird Coaching, and he will be coming to you weekly to teach you more about Empowered Living. Hello and welcome. This is Jeff Bird with Jeffrey Bird Coaching, and this is Empowered Living. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. The topic for today is all about the stepping stones in our pathway. Recently, I've been doing some thinking about pathways, and I realize now uh, I'm in my 53rd year. I realize that as I look back, I was building a pathway to exactly where I am right now at this moment, all through my life. As a matter of fact, I realized that in order to get to this exact spot where I am, I had to take the exact steps that I took, for better or for worse. They led me to exactly where I am. And the same is true for each one of us. If you take a minute and look back through your life, you'll realize that, hey, where I am is the exact result of where I've been and the decisions I made. They got me to exactly where I am. And like one mentor of mine said, you are exactly where you're supposed to be given everything you've done to get there, <laughs> right? The decisions we made, the places we've been, the things we've been through, and how we responded to them couldn't have gotten us to any other point but where we are are right now. And if you're happy about that, then that's good. If you look back and go, wow, that's great. I made the decisions that I'm so happy that I made and I would make them again. And wow, this is just great. I'm pleased with this. Or as maybe some of us would, would do, look back and go, wow, I, I just, I, I didn't know A from Bull's foot about what I was doing. I just, I didn't even know I was on a path to anywhere. I was just making whatever decision seemed best at the time. I wish I'd have gotten better advice, wish I'd have paid attention more, uh, but I just did whatever was there at the moment, and, well, I've gotten some results that are uh, kind of look that way. Uh, it looks like that's what that I did and the decisions I made. And, but what we can do is we can learn from that, and we can start putting better stepping stones in front of us on the path that we're going. We can get a clearer vision of where we want to go, and then find out which stones we need to have in place to get to where we want to go. So we're on a path. What we, what we don't want to do, if we can help it, is to be like Charlie Brown. I remember the old Peanuts cartoon where Charlie Brown was out shooting arrows off of a bow, and he didn't have a bullseye, he didn't have a target, just wherever the arrow would land, he would go and paint a bullseye around it and be like, well, see, there I hit the bullseye. And uh, I'm afraid uh, that that's a little too much like what, uh, what a lot of us are like sometimes. We're, uh, we're just shooting, we're just shooting the arrows. We don't have a clear target and, uh, we're just doing what, what we can to get by. And then whatever we hit, we go, oh yeah, yeah, I meant to do that. Uh, that's, that's the bullseye. But, um, Truth be told, we didn't have a very clear objective defined that we were deliberately putting the stones in place to get to. So the first thing we want to talk about on today's session is just putting those big pieces, those big stones in place. What are those, what are those pieces that need to be there in order for us to step on, to, to get closer to where we're trying to go? We talked last time about the vision of where we're trying to go. This time is what, what are the stones that need to be there to get there? Right. And so there's a, there's a wonderful book out by John Maxwell, one of my mentors, as most of you listening probably know. Um, it's called Today Matters. Today Matters. And I like that title uh, because of the double entendre. Number one, today does indeed matter. What we do with today, we only get one today. We'll never have another today um, for, this say, for this day that we're in. Well, we won't get this day back. In order, we don't get a do-over. We can't do 110% tomorrow if we don't do enough today because there's no such thing as 110%. There's only 100%. That's all we can give each day. If we don't do the best we can see to do each day, we can't make up for it the next day because tomorrow we'll need all our resources to deal with tomorrow, right? You can't backtrack. So uh, each day matters. And then the other part of the title, Today Matters, is it is the matters 
of today? What are the matters? What are the stones that I'm going to put in place today? What do I need to focus on the most? And then we'll break it down in a, in a subsequent session of what do I need to do to work on each of those stones. But today is figuring out the stones that we need to get us where we need. Okay, so I want to give you this list that John shares in his book. There are These are 12 things, and uh, don't get overwhelmed. Just please don't get overwhelmed. Uh, I do not recommend trying to take on 12 things at once. My wife and I sat down uh, some weeks ago, and we said, you know, okay, let's, let's take three focal points, three stones, if you will, that we want to focus on for this year. Uh, what are they? We, when we wanted to focus on the, the spiritual side, the health side, physical health, and the vocational side, building up what we do and uh, making that bigger. Uh, and so those were our three things. And three things might be too many for you. And if that's the case, don't overbook your schedule. Don't overstress your mind or your emotions. Just figure out what of this list is the most important stone to put in place. And then in the next session, we'll look at what we need to do on a daily basis to help strengthen that. But don't try to take them all on. You're probably already really good at, at a few of them. And there's probably a few that need some work. So I would pick one, maybe two of those ones that need some work and see how you can put them in place. See how you can work on them on a daily basis. And here's the list. Let me give you the list. So number one is attitude. Attitude gives us possibility. Without a good attitude, there's just much less that's actually possible for us, right? Nobody wants to work with somebody with a bad attitude. Nobody really wants to be around somebody with a bad attitude. It's like, uh, go choose a good attitude and then come back and we'll do something together. But I, don't, I just don't want to be around you with a bad attitude. I don't want you dragging me down, right? So attitude is the first one. The second one is priorities. Priorities give us focus, Someone once said that if everything is important, then nothing is, and that's so true. So priorities show us what's important. It's like, no, this is important, this is important, this is important. These are my priorities today. This is what I need to focus on the most. The third one is health gives us strength. We need physical health. Uh, What can we do with our diet? What can we do with our exercise? What can we do with putting more activity into our day? Um, Health gives us strength energy and and gets us going forward so that we can do the other things. And once the health goes, uh, then nothing else is important. Getting the health back is is the number one priority. So maintaining that health, if you've got it, is is also a priority. Number four, family gives us stability. And this might be your your biological family that you're born into. I had a discussion with a friend this past week, and and the best place for her to grow wasn't really with her biological family. She would see them, she'll visit with them, but she just doesn't want to live in the midst of them. They they just don't have a mindset that's helpful for her. But family gives stability, and this is either the biological family or the family that you choose. You can choose. If your biological family isn't where you need to be in order to move forward and reach your greatest potential. You can choose people who are and live with them, relate to them, communicate with them as though they are your family because they are your chosen family. You didn't choose the biological family, but the the people that you choose deliberately to be around, they are your chosen family, okay? Then thinking, number five, thinking gives us an advantage. I love to spend time just thinking about things. I I think about, I'll read something and I'll think about this. I'll think about a thought. I'll think about how it applies in the life. I'll think about how it applies to different people and situations that I know. Uh, I do this every day. Uh, I start my days off. I always start with Scripture, with several chapters from Scripture, and I'll think about that and how it applies. And then I'll read other things. I'll read other books, too. And, uh, and I'll just think about that. And uh, sometimes I even see movies, watch movies on TV or might see a show. And I'll think about that. I'll be like, wow, that's a, they just illustrated a principle that also applies in my life and in your life. And seeing those things and how to develop those good things. Uh, so thinking gives us an advantage, especially over people who don't think much. And, you know, a lot of people, I don't think, do a lot of thinking these days. It's more everybody's in survival mode. But if we think about it and really think into it, we'll come up with insights that other people don't have. And that will give us an advantage and also an ability to help. 
Commitment, number six, commitment gives us tenacity. When we identify where we're going and why it's important, and then the stepping stones along the way that we need to put in place, we can commit to developing those areas. And that creates that stick to that hang on. Those things are important. Even when it gets difficult, we're still going to hang on to those things. Commitment gives us tenacity. Number seven, finances give us options. Finances give us options. Uh, as uh, has been said, more money, once your basic necessities are met, more money does not make you happier. That's a myth and a legend. That is just not true. More money doesn't make us happier. More money gives us more options. There are more things we can do with it. And if we're moving along the right lines, we can do beneficial things with it for ourselves and for other people. Uh, We have more options. We can help more. As I was talking with some friends yesterday, it's like we cannot give what we do not have. doesn't matter how much you want to help or to give. If you don't have it, you can't give it. So uh, that's one of my reasons for wanting more money is so that I can give more and help more and make more of a difference, have more options. Number eight, faith gives us peace. Faith gives us peace. Faith is really an alignment with unseen principles, right? It's an alignment, and that gives us peace. It's like, hey, we can't see these principles, but yet they work. They're there. You can't see the air around you. I was watching a pelican fly the other day over the river, and I realized, hey, he stretches out his wings by faith. He has faith that that air current is there and is going to lift him up if he spreads out his wings. He can't see the air, but he spreads his wings, and he flies over the water where otherwise he would drown, probably, if he didn't have wings. Um, so that's, that's how the birds do it. I think that's why God likes birds is because they're operating on faith. Same thing with aerodynamics. That's how a plane flies. And we have faith because we understand the unseen principle. We have faith that when we're on that plane, that it's made according to the laws of aerodynamics, that it's going to take off at a certain thrust and lift, and it's going to fly, and the wings are going to give it buoyancy. And, um, uh, it's going to get us where we need to go because we trust that it's in alignment with the unseen principles. It's the same on the spiritual, same on the physical. When we align with the unseen principles that are bigger than we are, we didn't make them. We just need to discover them and then align with them. That gives us peace. It's like, hey, we're on the right path, doing the right thing. We're going to get there. Okay, number nine, relationships give us fulfillment. That's so true. Whether you're in a significant relationship or not, the relationships with the people around you give fulfillment, especially when we're doing something to add value. I always feel like any day that goes by that I've added value to somebody else, I've encouraged them, I've helped them move forward, I've helped them have more faith, I've helped them keep going, I've helped them to make a good decision. Any day that I help somebody be better, is a good day. Those relationships give fulfillment. And especially during a challenging season when you don't know where you are, helping buoy somebody else up will also buoy you up. So sometimes when things are most difficult, the question is, okay, there's a whole lot going on that I don't have any control over. What can I do to help somebody else? What do I possess that I can, is it a thought? Is it an encouraging word? Um, What is it that I have that I can do that will help buoy them up? Because relationships give fulfillment. Number 10, generosity gives significance. And this doesn't have to be just in the financial realm. It's nice to do it in the financial realm if you can. Even if you have a little bit to give, that's better than nothing. But generosity of spirit, of attitude, of emotion, um, that that helps. That helps people. It gives us significance. It's like, wow, I, I I have a gift. Even using your gift, being generous with your with your gifts, it's like, wow, I have a gift. And when I use that and buoy other people up, it gives me significance. I feel good. I feel like, wow, I made a difference in this world. I made some sort of an impact. So being generous with what you and you always want to give what you do have, not what you don't have, because you can't really do it anyway. So don't feel bad about what you don't have to give. Feel good about what you do have to give. Number 11, values give direction. The more clearly you understand what your values are, the more clear your direction is going to be. 
because you always want to be moving in that direction of your values. Values give direction. So knowing what you stand for and what you don't stand for, it makes it a lot easier to make decisions and to keep on the path that you need to be on because you've got direction. And the last one, number 12, is growth gives potential right? The more we grow, the more we learn something, the more insight we gain as a person, just the greater our personal growth and our development, then the more we're going to have, the more potential we're going to have, the more good we can potentially do, the better off we can potentially be. So growing, having some means of growing, putting in good thinking, uh, thinking through things, taking time to reflect so that we can grow and develop and learn from those. Those give us potential. So again, I would, I'll would i go through this list just with the main words again, so in case you're taking notes, you can jot it down. They are number one, attitude, number two, priorities, number three, health, number four, family, number five, thinking, number six, commitment, number seven, finances, number eight, faith, number nine, relationships, number 10, generosity, number 11, values, and number 12, growth. My suggestion for you is that you take that list and just make just number them, which ones you feel like you're best at and which ones need the most development. They're all important, but don't take them all on at once. So take the two that you're best at and be grateful that you're, that you're already strong in those areas. You'll add the most value to yourself and other people from those areas that you're the strongest at. And then I would recommend that you find one or two of those that you feel is weak that would really help you the most if you were better at those, and then start focusing on those. And we'll talk about how to do that in a future episode. But at least for right now, figure out which of those stones need to be emphasized and put in your path so that you can end up where you want to be. Again, I'm Jeff Bird with Jeff Bird Coaching. If you want to reach out to me, my email is jeff at jeffbirdcoaching.com. Dot com. Bird is with a Y, jeffbirdcoaching.com, jeff at jeffbirdcoaching.com. And so I would love to hear from you. I thank you for tuning in. I hope that this time has been beneficial for you. And until next time, God bless you.